If you're an attorney that struggles with getting home in time for dinner or taking a vacation without your cell phone and your laptop attached to your hip, or maybe you just can't figure out why you don't make more money based on your education level and the service that you give to your clients. Maybe you're an attorney who wonders, why can't my law firm operate without my constant presence? Or finally, maybe you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if I can ever retire from my firm. Maybe I'm going to have to work right to my dying day, like so many other attorneys before me have done. Well, hi, my name is Richard James, and I created EA Nation so that you could learn how to build a law firm that supports your lifestyle as compared to undermining your lifestyle. EA Nation stands for Entrepreneurial Attorney Nation, and we join together with other like-minded entrepreneurial attorneys to unpack the secrets to how to do just that. And I want to help you build your law firm better one system at a time. So without further ado, let's get started with this next episode. If you don't know Travis, maybe you haven't been to one of our events and you haven't met Travis in person. Uh, maybe you're new to our world and you don't know who Travis is. Let me give you my history working with Travis. So not only did this Travis and I know each other very well, having been to the Dan Kennedy world together, uh, his dad and I were in a mastermind together. I don't know if that dates me or that dates Travis. Doesn't really matter. But his dad and I were in a mastermind together and, um, and, and they're brilliant marketers. Um, and then I realized what they had to offer in 3D mail. And if you're a Partners Club member, the unconverted lead letters that we wrote for you uh, was actually written as a collaboration with Travis and the 3D mail packages he put together. And so those are there for you to use as a Partners Club member to unconverted leads. We wrote those reports for you and the 3D mail prescription bottles and things like that. Uh, and now recently, I've been using Travis to mail out our uh, direct mail pieces for prospecting. Uh, and we just relaunched about five or six weeks ago. And uh, we're using a new formula that maybe Travis and I will talk about. Not new formula, but just a little bit new for us. And it's actually working really, really well. I don't know if Travis knows this or not, but we're going to increase the size of the mailing list. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that. But I, here's what I know. Travis understands all things direct mail, how to use uh, lumpy mail or 3D mail to make sure you get results. And we'll talk about why that's important. And, and I can tell you, uh, he's personally helped us write the letters that you use in your unconverted lead messages um, if you chose to use them out of your member benefit. And I, and I use them to, to send our direct mail and we're getting results with them. So highly recommend you listen to what uh, Travis has to say today. Travis will present and I will ask any, some questions. But before we go there, Travis, if I didn't cover something, why don't you tell everybody like, where are you in the country? What's your family like? What else you're passionate about? Or anything else you feel I left off? You bet. So we're located up here in a little town called Buckley, Washington. We're uh, about 60 miles from, uh, from Seattle, Tacoma area, up in the foothills of Mount Rainier. So I actually, Mount Rainier is actually right back over my shoulder, if you're familiar with the area. Um, uh, we started the business in 2008. When I say we, my, my father, who you mentioned, started in 2008. Uh, not the best time to start a business. <laughs> you can recall back 12, 13 years ago now. But we're still here. We're alive. We're kicking. Um, even with the most recent hiccups in the economy, we're, uh, Rich and I were talking about that uh, beforehand. Um, yeah, I got a wife. I got two beautiful kids. I've got a dog. Um, we enjoy the mountains up here. I skied about 32 days out from the mountains last year, or last winter, so we got up there quite a bit. Um, we enjoy snow skiing, being out on the boat. Uh, we go to a lot of uh, college football games, so if there's any big college football fans out here, I, I may not compare to those of you maybe down in the SEC country, but, uh, but uh, we're pretty big college football fans out here. My wife and I uh, go about 250 miles each way for, you know, when we can, <laughs> hopefully again this fall, over to our alma mater, WSU, and we go to every football game, and, and that's kind of our little family tradition. So uh, other than that, I think you hit the nail on the head. I will add one thing. Uh, you mentioned we do the lead follow-up stuff. Um, most of actually what we're going to talk about today is on the front end of that funnel, actually getting the leads to raise their hand to begin with. Um, we have found that to be a pretty darn good formula for a lot of different attorneys, um, but ex and we'll get into this, but especially those attorneys where we can work on getting publicly available lists. Um, so we're going to kind of dive into that, talk about what all that means and, and go from there. And uh, like I told you, Rich, as we were getting ready, I don't want this to be a, a lecture. So please chime in as much as you want. You've got a ton, a ton of knowledge up there uh, swimming around as well. So I hope this is more of a conversation than a lecture. So uh, 
with that, I'll, I'll get sharing the screen if that's good with you. Yeah, it's great. And, and to be clear, the direct mail campaign you're running for us is uh, front side lead generation. Um, so it works both directions, but the lead generation, that's what really, you know, we'll, we'll cover both lead conversion for unconverted leads and, and lead generation today. But I see this uh, for law firms as one of the oil wells you should have in your, in your arsenal if you can, based on your practice area. Um, and, and I'll also say this, um, there's not like a magic button. Like we're going to teach you the basics today um, and you can get it, you know, moving uh, and you should have enough information. You can do it yourself. Um, but just know that direct mail is one of those things that just takes time to figure out sometimes. Sometimes you get lucky right away, but oftentimes it takes time to keep honing it and dialing it and then dialing it in to, to continue to get better results. So go ahead, Travis, why don't you start and then I'll chime in. Yeah, well, I think that's a, actually a great place to start is that this is not direct mail is one of those one of those marketing I mean, really marketing in general if you're doing it the right way it's not one of those medias where you're gonna hit a home run your first time at bat right that's why i like to use a lot of baseball analogies you might hit a single you might hit a double the whole idea is to set a baseline and then try to beat that baseline continually so we've got clients all over the country where we're constantly testing and tweaking things so that's a that's a great place to start but really when it comes to direct mail there really are only three things that you can worry about. That's, that, that's it. Um, first off is the list that you mail. Um, so we've got clients that are mailing, like I said, publicly available lists for, for you know, actionable things. So, you know, until recently foreclosures, um, you know, lawsuits, things like that, garnishments, evictions when those were around, right? Things like that. Things where there is a an actionable thing by a state, county, city, municipality, whatever, that we can now go and get that data. And now we know that person has a need for us potentially. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but there's really only three things. So the list that you mail, the offers that you make. So is that a lead generation offer? Is that a direct to consult offer? Is that a direct buy offer? So even in that area, there really are only three things that you can mess around with. Right. So like I said, hi, here I am by my stuff. That's what most people think of when they think of marketing. Right. There's hi, here I am. I may or may not be a good fit for you. Let's have a conversation, which is what most of my especially my bankruptcy attorneys are doing. Right. Because there's that immediate need if we're getting those aforementioned lists. And then there's a lead generation offer, which is hi, here I am. I might work for you. You might work for me. I'm not really sure yet but let's hear some free information you can get and then we'll find out if we can work together. That's what we're doing with Richard. So we're offering, we're, you know, the Richards group, we're offering a free book to attorneys throughout the country. And I did throw the, I think I told you, I threw your slides in at the very end. If we have time to talk about it, maybe you can give us the in, little insider scoop. Um, and then the last thing that you can have any, the last of the three that you can control is the copy and the creative. So what are you actually sending out? Um, is it a postcard? Is it a direct, is it a piece in an envelope? You know, so I've got a couple, couple things here. Is it a piece in a traditional white envelope? Is it a piece in a blue envelope? Is it a piece that no, that it looks like it's very important VIP mail, right? Uh, and then of course there's the words and the copy that you use. And really, those are really the only three things that you can even screw around with. There is a fourth area, but that's completely out of our control. And that's just the current environment. So if you sent a direct mail piece out May, March 12th, 2020, you were skunked no matter, even if you got all three of those things right, you were gonna get skunked. If you sent out a direct mail piece uh, the day before one of those freak Midwest storms and you get 14 inches of snow in May up in Minnesota, you're skunked, there's nothing you can do about it. So th there are four real areas, but we can't control the four. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue with the ones that we can control. Yeah, so if I if I can go back, so uh, real quick, Travis, the, I want to tie this together so they make sure you hear it from my language, folks. So what Travis is basically saying is the the concept that we both swipe and deployed from our mentor Dan Kennedy is the message media market match triangle, right? So market is the list that you mail. 
media, we're using direct mail as the media. So that's the media we're using. And then the message. So you have the message media market, market the list, met media, the direct mail, and then message. And inside the message, you have two compelling parts that, that you, have, you deal with is the offer that you make in your creative copy. And we're going we're gonna to talk about how important all of this is. So you have to get the, I've seen people have great marketing pieces, direct mail pieces uh, that got the copy right and the offer right, but they got the list wrong and it failed. And then I've seen people who had the right list, but had the wrong message, they had the wrong copy, had the wrong offer and it failed. And so you, you have to get all three of these right in order for it to work. Would you agree, Travis? Absolutely. Now, or, or uh, let me say it better. To, for, in order for it to work at its optimum. Yes. So you can be, so I like to tell people that you got the list. I put the list first. So your market, that's number one. That's probably going to be 50% of your battle. So yeah. while, there, while there's three of them, that one is the longer edge of the triangle, to be perfectly blunt. I mean, if you're a bankruptcy attorney and you got a list of people making half a million dollars a year with 800 credit scores, you could have Shakespeare writing your copy. It ain't going to make a lick of difference, right? It's not going to matter. You know, so that is by far, so I'd say it's, it's roughly 50% list, 20% each of the other two, and then those 10%, the things we can't control, the environment around us at, that, at any given yeah. time. You're exactly Got right. it. I like it. All right, good. Sorry, you can keep going. No, we're cool. So what kind of offers are working for attorneys? So we're going to talk about lists, but what kind of offers can work for attorneys? And we kind of briefly went over this. So what we see most of our attorneys do, especially if they're in the, you know, we need help right now type of environment. So we found them on a foreclosure list. We found them on a, on a lawsuit list. Uh, we found them via jail mail, right? So we go and get the list of all the D DWIs from last night and we run that list, whatever it is. We're typically doing a direct to consult. So that's best for those who need it now. So again, there's the immediacy of it. They don't have the luxury of waiting 30, 60, 90, 120, six years, whatever it is. So by and large, we're doing a direct, direct to consult when we do that kind of stuff. Now, so for example, with Richard, well, with other clients, we'll get to that in a minute, you know, they might do a lead generation offer. So perhaps that thing that you're offering for a lead gen offer, so a free book, a free course, a free class, a free webinar, those can be put into this offer. So when you come to the consult, you'll get the book. When you'll come to the consult, you'll get enrolled in the free credit training or you'll get the, the added stuff. But when there's that short runway, when there's that immediacy of the need, right? The, the garnishment's going to start. The, the guy's going to be in jail. Whatever it may be, we're typically doing a direct to consult. Now, the second one, and I talked about the hi, here I am, buy my stuff option on the last slide. We very rarely see that work. Just as, you know, it, it's, it's, it's what we all see on television and radio. But so what I like to say, it's never not truck month. It's always the best month to buy a truck because all, all those guys ever want to do is sell you a truck. They don't care if they're building their list. They don't care if you come for a, if they don't care if they, if you come for a test drive. I mean, they care if you come for a test drive, but they just want to sell you the dang truck. So it's always truck month, right? Most of what Rich and, Rich and I see work is either that, uh, that direct to consult or a lead generation offer. And you'll see some of these examples. I'm going to show you some client stuff later on. That lead generation offer is generally speaking better for those businesses, those practices with a long runway where there's no hard stop. So, for example, if you're in um, – uh, what's a good one? Long-term care law or something like that. Yeah, you've got estate planning care. would be a good one. What was that? I'm sorry. Estate planning would estate be. Estate planning, perfect. By, so by, by the way, I think we're now, there's, there's no longer not a truck day, right? <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Come get your truck today on Tuesday. You're I mean, exactly right. It's always by now and it's always, gonna see a, now is the best time of it. You're now exactly is the best time. But, but there's a lesson to be learned there. I yeah. mean, so we can make fun of it, but they, but they figured out a formula that works and they realized, well, the person who needs a truck on a Wednesday that's watching the TV, Wednesday's better be truck day, right? Yeah. The person that's watching the, the needs a truck in May, May better be truck month, 
right? Yeah. Furniture deal, furniture stores are the same, same way. And so yeah. the idea that just because somebody heard it every single day, you think that they paid attention to it is wrong. They weren't paying attention to it until their, uh, their RAS, right? Their reticular activation center was turned on so that they were paying attention and now looking for this thing. It's that thing that makes you see red Hondas wherever you go or whatever, because you're shopping for a, a Honda and you like a red one. It's the same concept. You block, you don't see red Hondas any ever until you're shopping for a red Honda, right? And so it's that same concept. So it's a, it's a really good lesson. And I want to go, I just want to back up to your direct to consult for a second. I, I like it a lot. I, I don't think it's an either or. I think it's a both and. Mm -hmm. I think um, anytime you are in a law, marketing for a law firm, you want to have some of direct consult being tested. But this is all about testing. This is, again, one of those variables. Do we do we do direct consult? Do we do lead generation? Do we do free book offer with lead magnet? Do we do direct consult with bonus if you come to the appointment? Do we do, you know, free gift with purchase kind of concept? Like, what are we going to do? And the answer is, I don't know. And this is one of those times where there's no absolutes in marketing. And, and there's no absolutes one year to the next. Um, I've seen things work one time and then environmental things change and it works differently another time. And so you just have to keep honing it down to figure it out. But then once you figure it out, once you figure it out, other than testing against it with a control, you need to, once you figure out whether direct consult works best or lead generation works best or direct consult with a, with a gift at, uh, at when you arrive to the consult works best, once you figure that out, you need to keep doing it over and over again. Do you agree with that, Travis? Well, 100. percent Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. It, it, it's um, I'll use a non-law example, but we had a we had a direct mail piece that worked like gangbusters for an auto repair shop here. He's actually he was my mechanic until I moved too far away and I had to drive by 100 others to get to him. Hmm. Worked like gangbusters for him. Worked extremely well. We picked up, moved the exact same campaign. The only difference was the garage we were promoting. And we moved, I forget, we, Minnesota, Wisconsin, I forget now, it's been a couple of years, and it bombed. Yeah, I mean, the right. same thing to this. The only difference was what were the names of the people who got it and the logo at the bottom of the letter, right? Yeah, so to, so to put that in speak here, I'll have, um, I'll have a family law attorney say to me, well, you know, I mailed Howard Snader's letter uh, that he gave me, and it just didn't work for me. So direct mail doesn't work for me. No, that's not true. Or, or Charles Zaputka gave me his direct mail piece on bankruptcy and I'm mailing it and, it, and it's, we just can't get it to work. So direct mail doesn't work. Nope, not how it works. Mm -hmm. you, you, just because you go down this direct mail, you see, it, it's hard, it's difficult. Like it's not the easy lead source. But once you figure it out, it's the lead source that works over and over and over again. And so, you, you know, I know, I know uh, attorneys who I've worked with through the years who's, who invested, you know, several thousands of dollars for copywriters to write their piece and hone it and figure it out. And they will tell you that when I ask them what the single best investment they've ever made, they will tell you the investment to get their direct mail piece correctly because it literally made the firm millions of dollars in gross revenue through the years because it just keeps working over and over and over again. So I know I've hit that hard, pretty hard, but I think it's an important point. Like, I don't know which one of these is right, Travis. I just know once we figure out which one is right, we can't stop doing it. Yes, exactly right. So, uh, you know, we'll, so we'll talk in general generalities, what works, what doesn't, what we see, you know. So we know, for example, I shouldn't say we know. We don't know anything over the course of the long term. But at least for right now, we know in certain markets, a direct to consult is working just fine. And we don't, and it, so should we be testing added bonuses, this, that, spiffing up the offer? Yeah, we probably should. And so I'm going to make that note and the handful of clients that we have doing that, I'm going to say, hey, what can we do to, to take this offer that maybe it's a six out of 10, can we make it an eight out of 10? You know, yeah, so. I mean, we found, so we found, you know, so, well, you know what, let's not do that because I can keep going down a rabbit hole. So <laughs> where, where did you want to go next with this? You and me both, buddy. We can go, we can go all day on just a couple of these topics. Yeah, we could. I, and yeah. I know I said, hey, do you have slides? He goes, slides, we could just talk. I go, <laughs> I know, but we need to give them something, We, you yeah. know. 
uh, because they need to see some words on paper because it, it just makes this a little bit more interesting. But yeah, I mean, the reality is, is you and I could talk about this and where it could all go, and we will. We'll cover it all for them. Mm -hmm. So anyway, lead generation now. So that's generally speaking, again, for those offers or services that have a longer timeline or a no obvious need for it right now, right? So, and we'll talk about how we can discover some of the people that may have a more obvious need than the, than the others. Um, but, you know, like you said, um, well, the, there's this so, planning. So yeah. to law specifically, there's different variances of readiness. Mm -hmm. So we said estate planning. So yes, estate planning is true. Uh, it is a practice area that has a little bit of a longer tail. Um, but when somebody has a loss in their family, somebody goes through a divorce, somebody buys a home, has a kid, uh, whatever, uh, these are all things that cause people to start thinking about taking action. And yep. so when we're direct mailing the estate planning world, we have to try to figure out, okay, which of those actions is the action that's most likely going to get them to move the needle? Uh, and then of those actions, which copy is going to get them to take action based on that action? Now, if I take bankruptcy, yeah, in bankruptcy scenario, if somebody's being garnished, they're likely going to be ready to act much quicker than if somebody just has is in pre-foreclosure. Um, but we will tell you that when we use the lead magnet in bankruptcy, for instance, what we what we find is we generate many, many more, more leads, but a smaller percentage of those leads will actually convert over to appointments. Now, where this is hard, and this is what I want you to be warned about, whether regardless of the media that you're using, in something like TV and radio, it, it, it's a larger, faster effect. But in something like direct mail, there's usually less pieces to mail. And so you're using a hyper-focused direct uh, piece and you're also going to get a smaller reply. Uh, but regardless, your team has to be trained for this. So if you use a lead magnet or you use a consult with a lead magnet bonus of some kind, you have to make sure that you your script that your phone people are using are, is designed to address the lead magnet and then convert the lead magnet over to an appointment because a larger number of people will come in as a lead as, and a smaller number of people will schedule appointment. So for instance, if you generate 100 leads using a lead magnet, only roughly 30% of them will schedule an appointment. But if you run the same ad and you run the ad or you run the same direct mail piece and you run that direct mail piece just for a consult, it's possible you only get 10 leads. And so you got 10 appointments and you didn't get a hundred calls. And so what happens is the staff gets upset because they got a hundred calls and only 30 scheduled appointment and they think it was a failed campaign. But in your case, you said to myself, well, when I only asked for an appointment, I made the staff happy because they didn't have to answer calls that didn't schedule appointments, but I only scheduled 10 appointments. And so my net net result was less appointments for the same dollars. Now, again, I'm, I'm not saying that there's any one particular hard and fast rule. I'm just saying that this all, that all of this works in conjunction with one another. So it's not just enough to get the direct mail piece right. Uh, as always, we got to make sure that we don't have any broken bridges inside of the office. But I, there we go down a rabbit hole again, Travis. Well, and you brought up a good point, too. And I, I didn't I glazed over it when we spoke about the list. Uh, you know, I kind of got transfixed on those bankruptcy and the law and the jail mail and that kind of stuff. But you brought up a great point just a couple minutes ago. There are points, I don't care what area of law you're in. If you're in one of those, we'll call, you know, long tail practices. There are points in life where everyone is going to be more apt to do what you want them to do. Correct. Right. And so you mentioned a lot of them, recent death, recent marriage, recent home ownership, recent baby, recent divorce. The great thing is those are all lists that we can get. I can get them, any mail, any, any direct mail list broker can get you those lists. You know, so uh, one of the examples I have coming up, and we'll kind of dive into it when we get there, is a estate planning law, law firm that wanted to target a certain demographic in a certain geography, and they wanted them to have a baby in the last two years, because that was something we could check off and say, I want them to meet income demographic data, marriage data, age data, 
okay, so yeah, maybe they're married, ha- married, and they've got some money. But that doesn't mean they're ready for us yet. No. But when you add that baby to it, when you add that recent empty nester to it, when you add that recent divorce to it, now that need, their antenna are up already now because of that. And you've just got to kind of, I don't want to say be there at the right time, but there is some of that to that kind of campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so the right time, like when is the right time? So that take that particular example. So I'm going to, I'm just going to turn off the share for a second. Cause I just want, I really want to talk to you about yeah. this and then we'll get into copy, but I, cool. this is so important, right? So let's take that example because I don't know if your presentation goes into timing. We're going to bridge into it. If you do, we'll have to skip over it later. Cause I think we'll cover it now, but you take a family who just had a baby. Like the, if we're going to buy a list, Like, when do we want to mail them that, like, direct mail piece? Do we want to come as soon as, like, hopefully the postman can slip it under the delivery door so as the baby takes its first cry, the piece is there? Or is that too soon? Mm -hmm. Or or do we need to make sure it comes, you know, after the first 30 days so mom and dad with their first baby isn't, like, freaked out and is finally settling into things? I don't know. The answer is, I just don't know. We have to test the timing of when we need to deliver that, which is why that was like one factor. Well, that one factor means all the difference in what list we're going to buy, how we have to mail the piece, what kind of postage we're going to be delivering, what kind of envelope we're going to be delivering. I mean, that one little factor changed everything. And so take a DUI situation. Do you want to be the, do you want to be the fastest one in the mail? Or is it better if you're not the fastest one, you let everybody else come because everybody else is mailing them too, and then you arrive in a special format right after them, but not too far after them, but far enough after them that, you know, close enough to them that you get their attention, but far enough away that you get separated from the pack. So there's a lot of this discussion about timing inside of this. And I don't know if you covered that in your slides at all, Travis, that we should talk about. Let's let's chat about that. You know, so... couple different thoughts on that. So, so for those short runway guys, we find that generally speaking, it's either, to, it's either good to be there first, last, and ideally both. Mm. So we are testing now with a couple of our bankruptcy attorneys, you know, the old rule of thumb has always been, you got to be there first. If you're not there first, you're not going to get it. That's kind right. of the, the thought with a bankruptcy or jail mail, right? So now we're testing Let's send one now and maybe we show up, maybe we do show up, but do we have any effect on the person as they're getting the other 32 letters at the same time? And we're going to talk about how we don't look like the other 32 that are showing up at the same time, right? So that's kind of where we're specialized. Um, So you could be there at, be there first. And we're finding, we're hopefully going to find here that being there last is also good. And so what I mean by that is those initial 32 all come in the first three days. And now they're overwhelmed, they're panicking, they don't know what's going on. It all goes into the garbage because they don't want to deal with any of it. They're either going to deal with all of it or not, or they're going to deal with none of it. And so it pretty much goes into the garbage if they're in that second, you know, I don't want to deal with any of it. Well, now we're testing, let's wait 10 to 15 days and then let's send one. And let's see if that now, the, the rush has left and now we're hopefully the only ones showing up at that time giving us, you know, giving us the mailbox to ourselves. Fine. So- I, I, I like it. I have a question for everybody. We got 30, 40 people on live, I think right now. Uh, give me an I do or an I in the chat. If you use direct mail in marketing right now, give me an I do or an I if you use direct mail in your marketing right now. Okay. One. Yep. Keep going. I or I do if you use direct mail and marketing. All right. So we're getting it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You're using direct mail in your marketing. You're using direct mail as a media. That's about it. So the other ones are wondering. Now, of those of you who are using direct mail in your marketing, how many of you mail your list more than once? The same list, send more than one piece to that mail piece another time. Sean, no. Charles twice. Sean and Charles two. So there was seven, eight, or nine, seven, eight, or nine people, and there was two or three, David, 
does two, Charles does two, Scott does two. So we're talking in this very small focus group, like 30%. Mm -hmm. And most of you do it because you've been around here for a while and you heard we talk about doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what is really important, Travis. The people that mailed the first one, it's fair, safe to say all of their competitors that got there on day one did not mail another one in the next seven days. Would you agree? I would, I would probably say 95 five plus percent or not, they're doing a one-time deal and they are moving on to the next week. So, so when we talk about copy, I, I really want to, I really want to talk about this idea of um, how do we design copy to work in a multi-step mailing? So let's, let's break, you were going to, you were going to share some examples or talk about copy. Let's talk about that. And then we'll, we'll get into that. Cause I think that's really important. It goes hand in hand with this timing issue. Cool. So I've actually, so one of the examples I have coming up here real soon is, is that new second step we're adding. It's, I don't know if Robert's on the phone, or Robert Geller's on the line, but it's for his stuff. So this first one, this is Lucid Law. They are, so now we're getting a list of chapter 13 cases that have been dismissed. So we talked about the list and we've talked about what are the publicly available things that we can go and get. They've identified that these chapter 13s that have been dismissed are great for them to get their hand in and now, you know, basically try again <laughs> for, the, for the prospect, right? And so we've redacted some of the stuff here. So you guys, so it is a little fuzzy for a reason. So don't think your screen is fuzzy. We don't want to give all the secrets away. These, some of these letters are proprietary to each person. Um, so this is one, I believe, and, and, and if the Lucid guys are on the, are on the call, they can uh, verify this a little bit more. I believe these are sent, I think, twice a month. So I think we're run, they're, set, they're getting the list on their own. So they're going to a courthouse. They're going to a website. They're finding the dismissed cases. They're then getting those lists. They're emailing them to us. And then we go and do our print and mail and stuffing in the whole nine yards. Um, what's unique about this one is they actually send this little thing. It's one of those little single servings of lemonade. And their idea is, let's make lemonade out of your dismissal lemons, right? So they're doing different things than everybody else. So first off, they've already gone down the hierarchy of lists or up the hierarchy of lists, depending on how you want to look at it. Everyone else was mailing these people six months ago when they orig originally had the lawsuit filed. Now we're trying to go and cherry pick a list where there's less competition. So that's one way to go about this timing, list, offer, media, is find a list that people don't, don't that your competitors just can't or won't mail. Yeah, go go outside of the circle. And, and I like that, but I want to put big warning. I want to put big warning. That's not where I want you all to start, right? So many of you aren't doing it at all in the, in the mainstream market. Like I want you to start with the, with the lists that we know are tried and true in the different areas. Like I like the idea, but let's get one oil well started. Um, and, and so the reason I could say that is because, because when I was first at this, I thought direct mail didn't work either in the bankruptcy firm in Phoenix when I was doing it. And I used direct mail exclusively in my pet supply business, but I couldn't make it work. And what I realized was, um, we were mailing the wrong list yeah. and uh, I was mailing pre foreclosure list predominantly because it was the main one I could get the easiest and the other lists were hard to get. And once I got the right list, direct mail worked. And so using the, using a, a third level or a, a, a few, as you said, up or down the pipeline list can work and you might get great results from it. Um, and maybe it should be one of the lists in the arsenal, yep. but let's make, but, but oftentimes two things, one, they're smaller lists because there's yep. less of them. And, and, and two, um, I want, you should be able to master the main lists as well. So I love this idea. It's a way to, to beat the timing and go to, into a crowd, less crowded market. Um, but I, I do want to warn you that if you're not doing direct mail, like that's not where I want you to start. Yep. To let's, start with go to one, let's go to that top of funnel one. Uh, yeah, so this is Robert Geller. This is what I always tell. Is this Robert? Oh, yeah. this is the second half of, of the Lucid Law letter. We yeah. don't need to, you guys. So here's the more, here is the more quote unquote traditional way of mailing in a bankruptcy environment. So this is a letter that we send out every single day for Robert. We get a list 
of everyone, well, everyone who has had a lawsuit and until March of 2020, everyone who also had a foreclosure. So we had two letters, right? Foreclosure letter, lawsuit letter, 80% of it was the same, 20% of it was different to talk about the specific need of each different one. We're able to pull those lists from a county website daily and mail them daily. So we are, you know, if, 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 if these things hit the county website on Monday, it's out in the mail on Tuesday. So we are going quick. You're muted, Rich. <laughs> can you do me a favor? Can you go back two slides on me? For sure. So, so see Karina's attorney advertisement. It might be a bar association rule. I don't know. Uh, Jersey. Almost always is. Yeah. But, but so do you see how she put attorney advertisement under the address? If, if that's where it has to be, according to the Bar Association, fine. But now forward with Robert Geller. Yep. This is what we did too. The guidelines in Arizona said we had to have it on there, but we just put it in a different color and it wasn't so like it wasn't red or whatever. We just put it in a different color under the address and it kind of yep. blended in and got lost, especially since the address is in a type font and the and the letter is in this really nice handwritten font. Um, unless that's not actually handwritten, that's a font, right? Yeah, that's the same one we're using for yours. Yeah, but that, yeah, that's good. That really is. good. I mean, that's a that's, that's a the, really powerful that's font. Really graphic font that she's allowed us to use. <laughs> so so the 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 that little lesson right there about you know lawyers solicitation is an issue with most bar associations and you have to put attorney advertising on a lot of your direct mail that's one little secret about getting it open which i know you're going to talk about in a bit here so let's let's keep going on this because well that that's what you said like you said in the opening slide i don't know that you said it but it said it in the opening slide like the most important thing we can do is get the mail read right so how do we get the letter open and this was one of those little tells. If you're not using direct mail, when you start direct mail, remember this. If you are using direct mail and you're not doing it right, or you haven't figured out how to get your direct mail open better, try, this is another thing you can test, right? So you're testing your offer. You're also testing what font you're using. You're also testing what where you're putting the attorney advertising if you're required to use it. You're testing what the return address is. Do you use just the attorney's name? Do you use the law firm name? Is it a blind mailing address with no name? I mean, there are so many different little things you can test here, right, Travis? You're exactly right. And so for this particular one, we did what, what um, Dan Kennedy, what um, uh, John Carlton, those guys are called semi-blind sneak up. Right. So there's, there's just Robert's name, Right. And his and his and his practice address and then the person's name written in a handwritten font. Um, I you love know, I it, love that piece. I bet you about, I bet you it does. Well, really think well. about this. What are most of your competition going to send? They are going to send a number 10 white envelope with a window in the left or right hand corner with their return address with a logo and the full name of the practice in there. So after the after your so now imagine yourself you're just been handed you've just been uh, handed a lawsuit filed against you, all these letters are showing up now. If you're not in a competitive environment, less of a concern. If you're in a competitive environment, you you it's a big concern showing up differently than everybody else. This thing hits Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All these letters start showing up. And all of them look pretty much the same. I can almost guarantee that most of them, number 10 envelope, logo in the upper left-hand corner, computer-generated address. Well, now we've got, so those now, after they get two or three of those, they're either going to throw them away or they're going to open all. They're either going to throw all of them away or they're going to open all of them. So we have, you know, so now we're just at the mercy of the person who's getting it. We want to make sure that this is looks it looks different than all the other stuff that they're getting, right? And so again, with, when Robert and I discussed this, we've been mailing this now for Robert for two or three years. Um, we, you know, again, we assumed, and he, and with his validation, having seen his competitors, everyone was going to put attorney advertisement in a red slug. Well, we did a green slug, and as a, you know, and the general rule for that is check your bar. That slug either needs to be as big as the biggest or as small as the smallest, right? So. If, if you've got a size six font, you can use a size six font that that's the rule. But we, you know, we had to go through all the bar association, get this, get this hammered out and, and okay. 
but it, oh, and one thing I didn't add here, we put a live stamp on there. And so I didn't, I didn't take a picture of it. We put a real live first class stamp and we almost always use a non-traditional stamp. And so by that, by that, I mean, it's not an American flag. Right, so if you think about all the stamps that you can go to the post office and get, they're usually Statue of Liberty, American flag, something like that. We go and we get Elvis stamps, we get Mickey Mouse stamps, we get flower stamps, we get dinosaur stamps. Whatever we can get on a, on a big roll that looks different than all the other big rolls so we can apply these quickly, that's what we use. So it's, and I should have taken a picture with that, I apologize, because that is a big part of this. Let's, is, let's talk a little bit about, uh, so we're getting some feedback about some bar associations don't accept the direct mails you're portraying. And that may, that may be true. Um, but yeah, I think Charles is making a really good point. Most bar rules are generally not as strict as we think that they are. And you'd be surprised what gets approved through your bar. Um, uh, but, but let's move on to something that you specialize in, this idea of what, you know, getting the envelopes open. You want to talk about some of your 3D mail things of how you use lumpy mail in 3D as yeah. we're getting into the last 20 minutes, you and I could, as yeah, I so, keep talking about. I that. know we could talk forever. So here's Robert's letter. Uh, just real briefly, I think one of my next ones coming up here, uh, and if not, I'll, I'll cycle through relatively quick. Here's that second letter. So we're gonna be first and we're gonna be last. Right. So now very similar letter. We changed up some of the verbiage. We went to a blue envelope just to make it look a little bit different. Um, we did the return address in that same handwritten font now, same life stamp, again, to give it that look and feel. So anyway, that's that. It, it, you can look at that. Um, here's one for jail mail. I think I got a couple coming up here real quick. Again, this is, you know, you've been arrested. What, what do we do now? Um, so with, with Keith here, we do it a little differently. Uh, my guess is it's because of what he has to do with his bar association. Correct. Um, Oh, here's one. And, and then I think, yeah, and then I do get into some of the 3D mail stuff, Rick, some of the real specialized stuff. Um, this is one we talked about uh, estate planning. This went out uh, invitation size in, an, in a statement size letter. So we used a bright red envelope. I think we ended up using, we used that similar font. I think we used like a silver or a gray color. So it was almost written like a, uh, like one of those nice silver felt pins, you know, your yeah. fiance would have used for your wedding yeah. <laughs> so many years ago, right? Same yeah. idea. Um, so again, that's fun, different, different stuff. In this case, we were offering a book. So this was that lead generation for that longer tail. Um, these are the guys out, um, um, Jackson McNichol out in Portland, Maine. Um, yeah. Francis and Alex. Yep. Yep. So we're, so again, just different stuff. So now when you get into some of this other stuff, and this was the one I told you, this was a 60 mile radius around their practice. They were married homeowners, a, in, a household income, and they had that child within the last two years. And again, we can't give away all the secrets in the screenshot there, but it basically said, you've had a baby, that's a change in your life. And with change in your life come changes in how you have to think going forward. That's essentially what it was. And the book reveals all, right? The book reveals everything. One thing I will note too, before you jump in, Rich, we almost always as well, give them an option to call right now if, they, if they're ready. So 80% of this is the book. 10, 15% is get the book, but if you already know you're ready and this is something you know you wanna do, give us a call and we have a free, a free consult with you. So go ahead, Rich. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, I, there, there are so many options and which one works best. Uh, it, it really comes down to testing as we said, but when you're doing this, um, like how important do you think is it that attorneys go out and hire a copywriter to help them with this? I mean, I know that if they work with you, you can help them create the copy based on your experience. But if they're doing it on their own, there, there is a skill to writing the right copy that gets people to take action. Would you agree? Yes. And I would say, let's say you're writing your own copy in-house right now for internal communications, right? Your ongoing emails, maybe you got a newsletter, if you struggle in speaking to your own, you know, your own little herd, it's going to be even that much harder when you get to the quote unquote unwashed masses. Um, however, if you can develop the skill of copywriting, I know you'll agree with this, Rich, it's probably the most valuable marketing skill you can, you can improve on. 
Um, I believe that if you really, if you, unless you go hire somebody who specifically writes for your industry. So unless you're going to go hire like a Dan Kennedy to write info, you know, the info marketing world, because that's all he does. If you can develop the skill of copywriting and get good at it, I truly believe that you can do it better than most hired copywriters. Now, is that a good use of your time or not? <laughs> right now you got well, that. The, the pro here's the problem with attorneys. We have a hard time <laughs> getting them to do all the other things they need to do to work on their business to not just being the lawyer all the time because they're so yeah. busy being the lawyer, whether they're actually billing hours or they're working hours on cases. Um, the reality is, is they're not going to have the time to do it yeah. right, uh, most of them. Uh, and so you really do. My, my recommendation is get a copywriter, get with somebody like Travis and have him help you write your piece. Uh, if you're going to work with them, it's part of kind of what they do with you as a total service package. But but don't just try to do it on your own. Or if you've if you're in Partners Club and you know another attorney who's done it similarly and they're willing to share it with you, which if you're not a competitor, they usually are. Um, they'll, they'll help you, you know, they'll help you do this. Or we've talked about, we've had lots of clients in the past come to us and say, Hey, can't we, you know, I'm a bankruptcy attorney. We got six bankruptcy attorneys or six DUI attorneys around the country. Can't we pull our funds and have a copywriter write copy for us? And the answer is yes, but you need somebody to lead the charge and that's where it always fails. Uh, but yeah, you can pull your funds because the same DUI letter that works in Washington will probably work in Scranton at some level. The copy will. Uh, the list that you use and, and the envelope that you use may be different. But yeah, you can certainly pull your funds together to get good quality copy written. So this is some of the things that you do, right? With rapid delivery and urgent deliver, urgent yeah, so letter. This is, a, this is an envelope that we use. The, this one specifically I'm showing you right now is for that lead follow-up consultation, right? So Andres Mejia has been a, a client of ours for years. He was one of our first people back in 2015, 2016 to say, I'm in, let's start doing some of this stuff. Um, and so as a immigration attorney, it's hard to go buy a list of people who need, who are here illegally. There's a yeah. reason for that, <laughs> right? So Andres can't go out and just buy a list. So he's got to create his own list. So he does a lot of lead generation marketing, which starts with, at least it did at the time, I'm sure it still does, get my book. So come and get my book and we'll go from there. Well, some states like this envelope, some states don't. So some states have told me, can't use it. Now, let me back up can't use it for that front end marketing, mm -hmm. right? So the things that, the, you know, where the, where Charles was saying the, there's rules, but they're not as strict as you think. That is true. A lot of states don't like this for that cold mailing. Some yeah, states- Krim, that, that would be to Krim's point or Kareem's point that, um, that yeah, if, you, if you're following up with an unconverted lead there, you're already protected by that client privilege concept so that because they're in your list and they've reached out to you, you no longer have to put advertising on it. You don't have to get the direct mail piece approved, Travis, is what you're you talking about. You got it. Yep. That's very, and that's the case in vast majority of states. So now we can get a little more aggressive and now we can start doing really what I started the business for, which was this crazy stuff we call 3D mail now. Correct. So now we've got this envelope comes in a nine by 12. We send them the free. Now this is step three of three for him, right? So we send them the free report. This is that no set, no hire, uh, no set, no hire, no show type of campaign. Right. So we do it all within this campaign. So, and, the, and then even with Andres, we have English versions and we have Spanish versions. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you. <laughs> so here's step two of it. I showed you step three. I'm kind of doing this in reverse. Here's step two of a no set, no hire, no show in Spanish. So now we've got, and I don't know how he does this within his CRM, but he'll, he'll have a Spanish track and he'll have an English track. Like at some point he's asking him how they prefer to communicate. Um, so now we've got parallel tracks going for no set, no hire, no, no set, no hire, no shows. And now we've got a Spanish version of this thing. And I, yes, that really is a real pill bottle. I've got one here. We actually mail this in the mail, just as you see it there. So imagine when this thing shows up, imagine the open rate. So at the very beginning, we talked about number one goal, seen, heard, read, listened to, gain attention. When this shows up, there is zero chance that it doesn't get open. Uh, I mean, and that's just the way it is. No, you're right. You're, you're right. I mean, it, it's, 
you know, when, and that's the beauty of be, you don't have to get this approved through the bar association when you send it to an unconverted mail, an unconverted lead list. No, yep. no, no set, no show, no hire. So you can um, get a lot more aggressive with those people. And I, and I, no, you know, so I Javier, the bot, the bottle is the envelope. You got it. You so, got it. So we, we, we stick that letter rolled up inside and it shows up with the postage and the label right on the outside. Right. So you guys can imagine when you get a stack of mail every day, I don't care if you're at the office or at, at the home or at your home office, everyone gets that stack of mail and it usually goes to the left or the right of your computer for the, for the rest of the afternoon. Well, this thing has to be on top. It cannot be anywhere other than so, on top. So Travis, to this point really quickly, you, what a lot of people don't know is like you can mail a coconut yep. <laughs> just as is, right? Like you can get postage and put it on a coconut and the post the USPS will mail the coconut. Uh, yeah. You can mail a hammer. Like you can mail anything you, the, the USPS will mail just about anything um, in whatever shape or size. They just put it through either dim weight or actual weight and mm -hmm. you put the postage on it and they'll mail it. You're and so exactly that's right. what Travis discovered years ago is you can use this 3D type mail to get people's attention because the post office will mail it as is. And now somebody's getting a, a, bot, a pill bottle in the mail and they open it and they see a letter and they start reading it. And of course, it becomes obvious, pretty obvious pretty quickly that this piece is, you know, a cute play on getting your attention, but it doesn't matter. We got their attention, right? Yep. And the one thing I will, I will say with this, two things. One... You can't just send the pill bottle and not give them a payoff. So you got to right. tell them why they're getting the pill bottle. So in this case, it quite literally is your, we will, and I won't get it exactly right, but we will cure your headache to your immigration problem. I mean, that is, or it's your prescription for your immigration headache. One of those two, I forget. It's in Spanish here. So if we've got any bilingual people or Spanish speakers, maybe you can discern that for me. I don't speak a lick of Spanish. So I know margarita and enchilada. That's about all I got, right? So... <laughs> Anyway, so you got to pay it off. You've got to tell them what it is that they're getting. And then one thing that I hear all the time, that's not professional. That won't work. I can't send that as a lawyer, a financial planner, blah, 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 blah. We will oftentimes disarm that conversation within that second or third parent, within that second or third sentence with a very short piece of copy. I've used it hundreds of thousands of times. Now, while it might seem funny to get pill bottle, in the mail, when it comes to my service, I am deeply devoted and you will get nut blah, you know, so, so you- Yeah, yeah, you cover it with, things. I've sent you this pill bottle for two very important reasons, right? First yep. is this, second is this. And so yep. you, you, you overcome the objection in the letter. Yeah. So we don't have enough time. We need to spend a, literally a week to deprogram whatever psychological barriers you might happen to have about your in, unwillingness to send a pill bottle in the mail because you think it's unprofessional. Uh, what most attorneys tell me who are all in will say, Rich, if you tell me to wear a clown suit on the corner and it will deliver me the leads and the revenue that will ultimately deliver me my freedom, I will wear a clown suit on the corner. Right, so it really just depends on how far you're willing to go, but this really isn't wearing a clown suit on the corner. This is just using uh, leverage to your advantage to get people's attention, because that's what we're trying to do is get people's attention. With, as, with the people being bombarded in as many different directions as they are, it's very difficult to get their attention, and so we have to use things like this to do that. You have a couple more examples? Yeah, we're, one, by the way, we're about the five minute warning. Okay, I, I think I got just one more, and I think we have your your uh, campaign. Cool. We can kind of dissect that too. Um, well, if it's mine, then we can go longer. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> so here's a, here's Bert uh, Bert Diener's letter. A quick example of that: Spanish speaking, no set list in Spanish. So he's got a he he's got an East Coast and a West Coast. He's mailing to both of them. Uh, one thing I will tell you, and I've heard this from multiple different people in different industries. So. Uh, the Spanish community, Spanish speaking community is huge on Facebook. Um, it is their number one way to talk with each other, to talk with their community. So the people that I know that are serving a Spanish speaking community almost always have some kind of Facebook reply mechanism built in. 
In Bert's case, he's got this little uh, QR code that they can scan it. It'll open messenger for him. I got a chiropractor who's in a, in a very heavy uh, Spanish speaking uh, part of Portland area. All of his stuff has Facebook stuff with it. I've heard it from a couple different other places. So that is, that's two, I bring that up to say, you can use modern, modern type, you know, reply devices, in this case, the Facebook Messenger, to get them to call you or to yeah, you can you you can everybody. merge old school and new school exactly and and with covid did covid did this a huge favor like go covid did old school and new school a huge favor because now you can't go to a restaurant without them putting the qr code thing in front of you and technology the way it is both on an android and, a, and an iphone you just put your camera over it and it pops the the menu up it used to be very very complicated now i won't send a direct mail piece without a qr code on it uh, because everybody's now conditioned. They know what it does and they know how to do it. They just take their camera, put it over it and voila, you got yourself a video or a landing page or whatever it is that you want them to have and they will use it. Yep, yep. Cool. So that's, for, um, that's just another example. And yeah. now I got yours if you want to talk about your stuff or we- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, so this is ours, right? Yep, so this is your, this is your envelope. Very, we're using that same, the, 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 the world famous Kelly Grafton handwritten we're giving font it the graft, and, and so what's really important with the Grafton font, you, you don't pick it up, um, you don't pick it up, like, unless you know, but where they're called ligatures. And it's the little ligatures that either connect or don't connect or cross over that make this look more like real handwriting. And so just to be clear, I used to pay soccer moms to take my envelopes, take them home, give them printers, whole nine yards. I mean, a whole mess. Everybody had their own credit card and they used to have to have all of their own printers and equipment and we have to have special things done with printing. And, and they would hand write them off. They'd put a live stamp on and they'd put them out in the mail after stuffing them. And, and Travis is like, you know, I think we can beat it with the right font. And he even said we could use you know, more of a bulk mail postage. Now, Travis, you're using a still a stamp for the bulk mail postage, right? Yeah. So we're sending your piece out. I believe it's first. I believe it's standard rate. Right. It's either first. It's either pre-sort standard or pre-sort first class. We won't get in. Basically, it means before it leaves the mail facility, we sort it for the post office, so that saves them time and money, so we get a postage break. Yeah, but so we're instead, still able to use that live 50 cents, stamp. it costs 30 cents, I think it is. Or exactly. Something like that. I think, yeah, exactly. So in 55 cents, I think we're paying about 28, 29 cents out the door. That's, that's $200 a thousand, folks. Yeah. That's $10,000 a year if you're mailing a thousand a week, which we are, right? Mm -hmm. And so you mail a thousand a week. It looks just like this. I think we're using a, are we using it completely blind or we're putting uh, maybe the logo of like Jamie Miller or something on the. Yeah, on the, we've got, we've got a nondescript envelope on the back flap. Yep, so on the back flap. So it just oh, gives it, a don't it just, example, but it's on the back flap and it's just a nondescript, you know, one, two, three Main Street, Phoenix AZ or whatever we ended up deciding. Yep, I forget yep. what it was. And we, um, we put this out and we put our piece. I don't know if you have the guts that you're showing them at I all. Do. Let me go hold on here. I can switch screens. Yeah, so, so it's our piece. Got a, it's got a direct mail. Uh, it's got a QR code. There's another piece that has testimonials on it. This is specifically to a bankruptcy list. So I think if you go, yeah, you'll see these are all bankruptcy attorneys um, because we're talking to bankruptcy attorneys. The list is bankruptcy attorneys. So I only give testimonials of bank bankruptcy attorneys. Uh, you can see we're using a limited time back in stock, uh, you know, and so, and we include a fax machine. And you would think a fax machine in 2021, I got three fax leads last week from people who fax in, attorneys love fax machines. They either use them electronically or they hand them to their assistant and they say, fax this to Richard James. And then we send the book. And so whether they click on the QR code, whether they fill out the form and snap a picture and email it in, they go to a fax machine or they go to a landing page or they pick up the phone and call us, whatever they wanna do, they can do it. And that's another really important point. I mean, you look at this direct mail piece, we make it really, really easy for them to respond in giving them multiple ways. Every one of these is tracked. If I had Amanda, if, well, if we had time and Amanda wanted to go through all the statistics, she could tell you all the statistics of all of this stuff and we could dive deep. And on Wednesdays we do, and we'll go through the data and determine whether it's working or not. 
ultimately we're looking fundamentally at leads generated, but we can track every one of the leads coming in because of the ways in which we track them. So a lot of advanced things here, attention, who, who we're speaking to, copy that was written by a professional copywriter, multiple different forms of ways to communicate, a call to action with a limited supply methodology, testimonials that are people that speak directly to them. You can see the testimonials have a couple of big important things on them. They have a headline, they have copy that are bolded and underlined the words I want them to see. So I create a second readership path. They say what I wanted to say, bankruptcy attorney, Jamie Miller, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, it also has the bonus audio CD so they can listen to it if they don't want to read. We tell them this is a real actual book. It's not an ebook, so there's no confusion. And if you go back one page again, Travis, you'll see the, the third party credit, credibility piece of Attorney at Law Magazine where I'm on the cover. Uh, and then a little bit more about the book and some bullets about what the book has. So this is a very well thought out piece. Here's the thing, folks. I probably mailed a thousand pieces a week for three to four years before, before we found the one that worked the best. And then Travis took the one that we found the one that worked the best and said, hey, I think I can do even better than you were doing by having it handwritten and I can do it with bulk mail. So for a lower postage rate, and he was right, right? So, so this, it just takes time. Uh, you can tell how old this piece is because look at how young I am in that picture. <laughs> Just saying, right? Okay, so Travis, we're a little bit over. Uh, yeah. How would you like people to get a hold of you? There you go. Yep, so I've got a website. I'll give you the quick 15-second version, 3dmailresults.com forward slash James. You can request what I've put together. I've put physical samples of many of the things you saw today, some even more, some a few less but I will send you what, our, what we're calling our um, direct mail success package for attorneys. I'll put it in the mail, send it to your priority mail envelope. You'll get it in a couple days. The big thing with that too as well, we talked about 78 different things you could possibly do. If you want and you request that, you can book a 30 minute schedule call with me right after you request that. And we, I will get on the phone and we can drill down and take those 78 different things that you could do and we'll find the two or three that we know are going to work for you and we'll put together a package and we'll test it. So 3dmailresults.com slash James, get your free success kit. Hey, uh, Amanda and or Sherry, can you post that link in the chat for anybody who wants to get there? Um, 3dmailresults.com forward slash James. Um, now everybody's going to call me James for the next week. <laughs> I debate slash Richard or slash James. You're all the same boat as me. You got two first names. So I get called Lee all the time. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. They, they put that in there for you. So, um, you know, so, so we, we learned a bunch of things here today, right? So first, first and foremost that, you know, this, this is not an easy button, but once you figure it out, it quite frankly lasts forever and it, and it just gets better. Uh, two, you really should have somebody who writes your copy other than you. So whether you hire a third party copywriter or you hire Travis to help you put the entire package together, I do highly recommend you work with an expert to get this started, even if you're swiping and deploying ethically and other members stuff. Um, I think you need to test different ways to get your mail open and some different 3D mail type things. If you want to escape the Bar Association, the first place you can start with direct mail to get your feet wet is mailing your unconverted leads. You won't have to get anything approved. You just, you just mail those people who don't set an appointment, don't show, and don't retain the firm when you first meet with them. And you can mail them right away without any approval from the Bar Association. Um, and, and as you do have to get approved from the Bar Association and do the different things that you do, uh, you know, go down the tr well-trodden path of things that have already worked for other people. And I think you'll find you're pre pleasantly surprised. Also, using lead magnets and lead generation as a tool, in addition to people who are uh, looking at diving in, so we call them divers or skimmers, looking at people who are diving in and asking for a consult, using both in conjunction with another is very, very helpful. And then just test, 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 test. One quick question for you, Travis. A lot of people ask, um, and, and here, I know my answer, but I'm curious about yours. If you're gonna, if you're gonna mail 500 pieces a week, because that's all the list gives you or whatever, um, and you're gonna mail 500 pieces a week, like how long do you run before you'll, you'll call, you'll take your control and then test against it? Like how long would you go before you 
What, what, what do you do? How do you look at that from a test? Yeah, so if we're mailing 500 a week, I would probably give yourself a couple months because first off, you need to be semi-statistically relevant, right? So go all the way back to stats class, your freshman year of college, and everyone had to take it. You got to be at least a little statistically significant, right? So you got to give it a few months. I will say with this caveat, if you mail something out and you go a couple weeks and it's crickets, you should change it up almost right away. Yeah. So if you if, if if you've got a if it's just a clunker, move on right away. But if you're starting to get the if if as long as you're getting phone calls, as long as you know, hey, I got this letter, or you know, test it a little bit. I'd say you probably need a couple thousand. And then you can start testing a little bit. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I do. I, so my, my rule is, my rule is um, take your, take your, uh, get your control piece, go get, get a couple thousand under your belt, two, three, 4,000, depending on let's say four weeks of mailings and then get your results. And so sometimes it takes an extra week or two to get all your results and get your results. And then I want you to mail, I want you to split the list or I want you to mail alongside of, like I want you to not just, I, I, I don't want you to do too much crazy replacement because we got one that works. Or if you're gonna test it, I only want you to change one thing. Yes. So only one thing at a time. So if you change the envelope, that's all I want you to test. Just change the envelope. If you change from using a live stamp to bulk, just change one thing. Don't change five things, you won't know what worked. So change one thing, go another three, four weeks, see if it works then change another thing, then change another thing. And, and, and by the way, if the one that worked previous worked better, you go back to that, right? But yeah. none of the numbers are large enough for a statistical meaningful advantage, yeah. but it's just about moving forward little bit at a little bit. So you're always testing against your control. So you develop a control piece, you change one thing, you see if it worked. That's how we created this. That's why it took me four years to get this perfected because I kept testing a little bit at a time to get it till I got to the point where it works. And now we're getting the rate of return that I want, which is, you know, running somewhere around a one and a half to 2% conversion. And for me, I'm very, very happy with that. For you, by the way, expectation for you as attorneys out there, you should not be shocked if you get a five to 10% conversion, it wouldn't shock me at all. Although I think you should plan on a one or 2% conversion. If you get it right, 5% conversion is not unheard of. Would you agree, Travis? Yeah, I would completely agree. And, and the, but then more importantly, and you know this, it really comes down to who's hiring and who's paying, right? Correct. So, so re response percentage is a good frontline indicator. If you're doing it right, you should be tracking that all the way through. Now, as a general rule of thumb, and I'm not, you know, if you've been with you with, with Rich any amount of time, you know all this. As a general rule of thumb, a direct mail lead, general rule of thumb, is going to be a better person at the end of the time that you're working with them than, generally speaking, your other leads. So response rate is a good front end indicator of, okay, can we get the needle to move? But what you'll really find is you may need half as many people to make the same amount of money because they're just going to hire at a higher rate. They're going to pay at a higher rate. They're going to do all that other stuff at a higher rate. So, so yeah, check that response, you know, use the response as that front end indicator. Um, but really money in the bank, that's what we're looking for. And we're looking for at least a four to one ROI for most of our stuff. If we can't get that, you know, that's kind of our general ben uh, benchmark. If we can't hit that, we're going to start tweak. Well, we're always tweaking, but if we're not hitting that right away, we're going to start tweaking stuff pretty darn quick. Quick. Cool. Hey, uh, David asked earlier in the conversation, do you have handcuffed keys? David, I'd say go and connect. I have a call with uh, Travis. I'm sure he can get handcuffed keys for your, yep. your criminal defense mailings. Sean, um, uh, Charles, I answered you. I saw you had, is two weeks too long? It's longer than I want to go. I, I actually prefer around 10 days um, after the first one, but I don't mind. Like I would, I'd like to send it on day 10 um, from the, from the tent, from the first time you sent it, but two, I mean, we're nitpicking over 14 days as compared to 10 days, I think. Uh, and then Javier, we answered that question is the bottle, the envelope. So, um, Travis, I think you were very helpful today. I think we gave them, uh, you know, my gosh, like Dan Kennedy did two and a half full days on direct mail, right? 
So we know there's a lot to this topic and there's a lot more than we cover in an hour, but I really appreciate you volunteering your time and stepping up and giving people some insight. Uh, and I think we gave them some tips and hopefully if they're doing it already, they can make it better. If they're not using direct mail, we've inspired them to try it. And hopefully overall, we've inspired them to be patient with it and try to get it right. Because when they do, they're going to develop an oil well that's going to feed them for a lifetime. So I appreciate you, Travis. Thank you, Richard. It was great. Uh, thanks for inviting me. And those of you that are going to be in San Diego, I will be there. And my, my wife's going to tag along this time. So I'll have a, I'll have a companion with me. So I'll, I'll, we'll see you all there in uh, San Diego in a couple months, hopefully. Fantastic. Look forward to seeing you there. Hey, everybody, if you're coming to San Diego, we'll see you there. If you're, you're signed up for Rapid Implementation tomorrow because you're a Partners Club member, we'll see you there. Uh, if you're not a Partners Club member and you paid to be at Rapid Implementation, we'll see you there as well. And again, on the book club on Thursday. I hope you uh, really enjoyed today's conversation where we help you build your law practice better one direct mail system at a time. Have a great day, everybody. I hope you enjoy today's episode. I hope you learn something about a system that you could put into your law firm so you can build that law firm that supports your lifestyle rather than undermine your lifestyle. I hope that you feel like you're part of our community we call Entrepreneurial Attorney Nation. If you'd like to learn more about what we do around here, the best way to get started is to go ahead and go to our website, therichardjames.com. That's therichardjames.com and request a free copy of one of our books so that you can take the next step in learning how we can help you build your practice better, one system at a time.